Now recently I had a privilege and honor to work with Ahmed at the Car Care Nut and we did a collaboration video together to talk about whether or not there is a difference in quality and fit and finish between cars that are made in Japan versus cars that are made outside Japan. And I talked about the fact that the difference is minimal, maybe half a percent at the most. So most consumers wouldn't know the difference in terms of fit and finish between Japan made cars and those made outside. But I also talked about the fact that there is sometimes a subtle difference. So let me show you what I mean by that. So even though you cannot really tell the difference between cars or trucks made in Japan versus somewhere else, the most uh, common thing I notice in terms of difference, if any, is the way that the plastic injection molding works. So whether it's the dash panel or part of the console here or the um, infotainment system area, if you look really carefully, it's not so much the grain of the plastic, but the, the gloss or the lack of gloss, I should say, in the plastic injection molding is a little bit different. Just a very subtle difference between uh, Japanese suppliers and North American or European suppliers. Uh, the Japanese suppliers seems to have uh, just the right amount of texture and uh, semi-gloss so that it looks like a real leather, even though this is actually a plastic injection molding part. Uh, you can't tell that it is plastic, right, if you look carefully. Uh, the grain and everything makes it look like real, real leather. And I noticed in uh, North American made or uh, European made uh, Toyota or other Japanese uh, models, it's not quite right. The grain is a little bit off sometimes and it has uh, too much gloss, for example. Not because of the treatment you apply to the plastic, but just right off the factory. Uh, and then even the grains like here, this is also plastic here, or vinyl, I should say. And uh, here in this Camry, um, it's very good because Kentucky is uh, one of the best factories out there. But you can also tell the texture is a little bit different than uh, some of the ones I see coming out of Japan, especially Lexus models. So those are some of the difference. Again, very subtle, very difficult to tell for untrained eye. Um, but I think there is some difference between Japanese made ones and the North American or European made ones only in the sense of surface finish and uh, surface quality. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty identical. Uh, at some point, I will talk about the software because on the current Toyota models, it's not very good at all. And I'm really glad that all the new models coming out will have a new Toyota Connected uh, software, which was designed in-house at um, Toyota Connected subsidiary. I did get certification from this company called Toyota Connected, by the way in the area of what we call Agile Thinking, our Scrum Master. This is sort of a new business tool that companies are using these days. So I am quite familiar with their work uh, and I'm just really glad that's being changed now. Hopefully I can evaluate the software separately at some point when I have a chance to do so. The last thing I'll point out is the engine compartment. This is where I also look for a few interesting uh, nuggets or uh, details about how well the car or truck was made. And in all Japanese brands or Japanese manufacturers, cars or trucks, you see some interesting telltale signs. So for example, important components are painted with a little dash of paint. Here is orange paint, a yellow paint here and another yellow paint here, and you see a blue paint here. These are all indication of inspection or quality check. There's another paint here. So as they install some of the critical components, they'll put a dab of paint to let you know that they inspected and checked to make sure it was installed or manufactured correctly. The different paint color correspond to different kinds of work. And so you can see a green here, a yellow here, a blue here, and orange here. And many manufacturers do not do that. You'll see this in Toyota models. You'll see in the Honda models. Uh, but you don't see it in some of the other European or North American brands. So that's a really good way to figure out whether or not there has been a double inspection. Sometimes even triple inspection to make sure that every component in this engine compartment was installed and manufactured correctly. It's kind of a reassurance thing to make sure that uh, there was nothing overlooked. Here's another blue paint over here. If you keep on looking, you'll see more paint. Blue one here as well. And so those are interesting things. Even down here in this little clip right here, there's a little paint job on that. A dab of paint over here. So these are a sign that everything was checked and to make sure that it was double checked. 
So if you look carefully, you'll see hundreds of these uh, small paint applied to the um, variety of components. So uh, it's a really good um, type of uh, manufacturing quality control. And I see it in a whole bunch of Toyota cars, but sometimes other brands do not have that. So that's another interesting point to keep in mind. I almost forgot to point out some interesting things you can discover when you open the hood because the seam between the outer panel and the inner panel and how they fold this and how they put this seam together is actually a very difficult thing to do. When I was in charge of manufacturing engineering, I was in charge of the hood assembly in the body shop and we always have to make sure that this edge here was done absolutely correctly because this is very important component for crash testing purposes. And nowadays, unlike the old days, these pieces are not welded anymore. They're actually glued together with a special adhesive, which is just as strong or sometimes stronger than spot welding. So if you look at some of the older design cars, you'll see spot welding all the way through. The difficulty with spot welding is that sometimes it's difficult to manage and control the integrity of those spots. But uh, with adhesive, you can manage exactly front to back all the way through with exact strength so that's some of the differences also looks cleaner and so forth you might notice also that the paint job inside is not as glossy as the outside that's to save money because you obviously don't have to have the same layer of clear coat inside as you do need to have it on the outside so there's obviously some compromises car companies make to reduce cost and optimize efficiency but the quality control is the most important thing and of course Toyota will never compromise that now, of course, the most important aspect of evaluating a car or truck is the driving character and how it feels on the road. Now, that's such an important topic. I'm going to dedicate another episode on that. But for now, all you have to remember is that the most important thing is a balancing act between the steering feel, the ride and the handling, the suspension, the engine, the braking, all that is sometimes very difficult to assess. Uh, so my number one suggestion for you if you're looking for a car and you're trying to figure out how to evaluate it while test driving it is to drive it more than once, at least twice, maybe even three times. And you might want to drive it under different conditions. So you drive one during the day and then another time you drive in the evening or when it's dark. Uh, maybe one you're driving during the regular day and another one during a rush hour or maybe when it's raining. And that way you can evaluate the car or truck under different circumstances and that is the best um, evidence of how the car or truck will feel uh, in many different types of a situation you will encounter. Uh, other than that, keep an eye on the steering feel. I think people tend to forget how important uh, it is to feel a sense of the road when you're driving. Some cars are much better in providing the road feel from the road to the steering and so you know exactly which way the car is pointed. But also there is an um, element of a steering accuracy that's sometimes missing in cars. Uh, in this Camry, they improved it so much over the years. There's a way more accuracy and a much better steering response than it used to be. So I can move the steering left to right and the car moves pretty quickly, which is something that Camry didn't have before. So look out for steering feel, the accuracy of how you're pointing the steering, um, drive the car over rough road and of course in city road and highway, uh, maybe have more people in the car, less people in the car, that kind of stuff. The more you can drive the car under different circumstances, the better evaluation is going to be. Just don't pay too much attention to horsepower and torque, uh, stuff like that. It's uh, rather than the numbers, it's just more important to have some seat time with the car and to get a feel when you take it on the road. So please don't do a 10 minute test drive of a car do a half an hour, drive it two or three times, and you have much better understanding of whether or not you're going to be happy with the car or truck over a longer period of time. So please let me know in the comments below if that was helpful or not. I can point out more things to do with manufacturing quality, defects, fit and finish, and tell you exactly how to figure things out in the future videos. But I would like to get some feedback from you and let me know what you want to learn from me and from my experience. Really looking forward to sharing more things with you in the future. But for now, I'm signing off. Thank you so much.